So hi and welcome to Strawberries Aerodynamics and the Trash Hovercraft experience. So let's start by unboxing and making sure we have the stuff we need. So let's start with that. What's inside the box? We check everything that's in here. Booklet, fin, some stickers, plastic sheets, template for skirts, the base for your first hovercraft, and save this for later. For right now we're not going to use it, but it's very, very useful as you can see. So it has a very similar shape. Uh, air duct, and it actually is both the air duct and the uh, cover with electronic parts inside. Um, here is the fan unit. It is a motor and a protective cover. Battery and the charger, the connectors, and here are the pipes, all the tape, one double-sided and one single-sided tape. One more item here, uh, which is the remote controller. Okay, the next step will be actually assembling your first hovercraft. So to be able to follow the instructions in the booklet, you will need some extra items, some kind of uh, USB 5 volt charging plug, you will need a pair of scissors, and you'll need a marker to be able to trace the template on your first hovercraft skirt. So before you start building, it's good to actually uh, charge the battery. Before you charge, if you have it in the wall, you see it has red light and shows that it has power. When it starts charging, it starts blinking green light. And then when it's done charging, you can see now that it has a steady green light and then you can just disconnect your battery. Put it in your hovercraft. Don't leave it unattended while charging. So now we're going to make the most fun part of the hovercraft, the one that actually makes a big difference when you're racing it. It's the skirt. So the first step is to place the plastic sheet on top of the template. So we need to find the plastic sheet and the template. So let's start with that. Placing the template on a work surface like a table, and then you place the plastic sheet on top of the template like this. I'll just put this on so it doesn't slide too much. You can use a very small piece of tape just to make it not slide if you're afraid of. Then we are uh, step two, which is trace the green and the red line. Uh, so I'll just trace the line like so. And then the green holes. You can use a ruler if you're a bit, uh, if you want to be super exact, but it, it doesn't really matter that much. And then I trace these holes because this is just the position, so where I want my air holes later. Okay, there we are, traced and done. Then we go to the next step, which is remove this and cut out all the green holes. So that's this part. We later cut the outside when we have put it together. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of a, a trick here. So I fold it along that crease and then I cut like that. And then I cut it out because then it's easy to come in here and cut this little square out. So there we are. So you can make round holes or square holes today. Uh, in this video, I'll make these square holes because it's faster to do. So I fold it on the middle again. And you don't have to be super, super exact. I'll just do this really fast like this. Ah, there we are. And uh, then we do the same with the big hole. We, I just use this just to make sure we're pretty okay with symmetry to get started cutting. And then I trace it. Okay, so there we are. Then we can proceed to the next step, which is to stick double-sided tape just outside the traced red line, which is the outer side of this, the outer line. So I'll do that. So 
there we are we've covered it completely now it's uh, the peeling so we can actually put on the old Bjorn Schiff song hooked on the peeling no we'll cut that <laughs> There we are. And then we go to the step number five. And this is actually where it can be easier if you have help from a friend. So I will get some help here. And then we stretch it and we place it down. And just smooth it out. So now we have the, the two sheets fused to each other. After that, we take our scissor again. And we go on to step number six which is cutting along the outer lines. So I'll do that. That was step number six. And then we have uh, step number seven. So it's for center hold down on template. Because now we're going to trace the final lines, which are the blue holes and then cut them out. So it's very important that you don't have the hole on top here. Now I'll actually trace them around. Then we cut out these holes and make sure you don't cut through both. So you see this is a, a little bit tricky. Once you have cut your first hole, just make sure to not cut through both. It's a plastic, just the top. There we have first hole down. Once again, crease, because otherwise you can't cut into the plastic. So step number nine. Now we have all the holes cut out. The basic design of the skirt is done. Uh, we will just need to invert it. We turn it inside out. Turning it inside out. And just try to get all the edges out to the side. So now, you see, when you go through inverting, it will look a bit like chaos until it becomes your skirt design. Uh, finally, there we are. So then we want to secure this to the other sheet with a piece of single sided tape. And then just make sure that it covers. Like that. Woo! There we are. Super. Let's go on to the next step. Then we go to step number 11. We Pick our strobes, the connectors. Uh, for now, we only need four. So it's good to pre bend these like this. There they are. And that was step number 11. Then we're going to step number 12. Get your base. So you connect it in here. Side of tape to the base like this. There we have it. Now we have done that. We go on to. Uh, we need to be able to secure this to the skirt. We just check that everything looks nice. So then we tape the edge as close to the edge is good. The closer the better in this case. And just like on the skirt, make sure it overlaps a little bit. From here to there. Done. Now it's just to peel this off. So what we do need to do now is keep this upside down so we don't accidentally stick it to a table. And then with these holes facing upwards, very important, the, the big four big holes facing upwards, make sure that upwards facing the orientation here does not matter like this but try to keep it centered put it down approximately in the do something like that but 
Just squeeze it down. Make sure it sticks. We have our skirt, base and skirt done for our first cardboard trash hovercraft. Step 17, which is to attach the plastic parts. So this is the uh, air duct. Uh, this is where the air will come in and push it down into this hole, which will push it out through these holes into the skirt and out through all these tiny holes that we made before. So we put the air duct on and this is the thing. Later when you use your hovercraft, this will be something you can just snap on and off as you please. And then you need four more uh, strawberries connectors. One, two, three, four. Uh, so we connect it to the base, push it down like that. And make sure it's secured to the base. So there we are, you can see it's stuck there to the base. Next step is taking the fan unit and sliding it on like that. And then we use two single strobes connectors again and secure it with those. So this is to be able to take impact when it's going really fast. In case something you hit something, these will actually take a lot of the impact and, and save the, uh, the hovercraft. So next step is taking our battery uh, that has been charged, connecting it to the cover Like that and then we put it down and snap it in now we're going to test that uh, radio uh, the transmitter works and the centering is correct for our uh, servo you need three double a batteries there we are then we turn it on and check what happens so the movement is great Looks centered, so we can leave that for now. In case it's not correct, you just unscrew this servo arm with a small screw. So this is good when you don't use this hovercraft later. You squeeze it and disconnect like this. And then we can remove the battery by turning this. These stick together very tightly because it's a uh, it's a lot of amperage when you power it on, so it needs to be a secure connection. So, but make sure to pull in the connectors. So you don't pull cables because then you might pull something that's soldered. Now we can put the cover back on so we can do the rest of the assembly. Okay, then we're on uh, step 28 to attach the fin. And we do this like this. Make sure they go all the way in like that. And we need two of these first. Get our fin it in like this and the other one here so in the image they're actually pointing backwards which is a bit better so I'll hold the strawberry and turn it like this so hold the one that goes through and turn the other connection strawberry backwards this keeps it not in the way of this moving part turn it over and we secure these with two more connectors. Squeeze them in all the way like this. So I put it on and I squeeze it all the way in. This is going to hold our linkage later. And then we're going to 31. Now we need some um, linkages. So we're going to use our construction pipes. It says 40 millimeters and 45. So you can actually use the included ruler here. I'll cut the 40 millimeter. There's the 40 millimeter. And this is a 60 millimeter. Connect the uh, pieces according to the image here. So the long 60 millimeter one down and 40 millimeter up here. Put this to the side temporarily. Then we go on to step number 32, which is making uh, our connection to the linkage. So now we're going to make um, a mechanical connection. So I connect uh, three strobes to this. So you hold. Hold it like this and fold it over. And this makes it have a little bit less movement, but it's also stiffer, so you need to loosen it. So I take two 
outer moving strobes and increase the mirrorism slightly here and connect them to these two pieces. Now you can see that we have a pretty straight angle and this is what's going to control the fin. Okay, then we are step 34, so we need three more strobes and we're going to make another swivel connection. I fold it over once again like this and then we go on to uh, step number 35 which is cut and connect pipes. The 45 millimeter one. Cut out the 105 millimeter and then we connect it like this. Now we can actually double check that it can move and the angle is correct. The angle is okay here. You can see it's pointing a little bit downwards. Next step is it needs to be in the same plane like this. So if you hold it like that, it's perpendicular to this draw. So not like this, but like this. So in the plane of movement. And uh, then we connect the 45 millimeter pipe. Now we have our fin with linkage done. Then we take our hovercraft back. Now we're going to secure uh, the fin to the, the base. And then we need four more strobes again, connectors. Uh, so we connect it through the holes like that. There we are, looks like this, it's connected. Uh, next step is to uh, secure them with two more connectors. There we are. Make sure they're pointing up so they don't come in and interfere with the, the fin. You see now we have a moving fin. And uh, then we connect it to the servo like that. Okay, so now we have the one final step, which is connecting the motor cables. You can see the motor cables connect the red to the red, the black to the black. And then we have a blue to a yellow here. So with a motor like this, this is generating a very electromagnetic field controlling this motor. So the next step is decorating your hovercraft and uh, you have these fancy stickers, uh, sticker sheets that you can use. Uh, for now, we won't do that because I think that's a very personal uh, thing. What you look nice, what you think look nice is what you should use. Um, but we'll go on to step number 40. And this is the final test before you can go out and race your amazing hovercraft. So this is the, what you would, would need for your final test. So you need your transmitter, you need the battery, and you need your hovercraft. So once again, to connect, disconnect it, just hold against the plastic in the bottom, pull it open like this. And when you do power up your hovercraft, you should always just turn on your transmitter first, then connect the battery. And now you hear that beep, and then try to figure out a way of pushing this inside the uh, the case here, put the cover in the slot like that, and then squeeze it down. And there we are. Now we can test the function. So what I see now is that when I'm turning to the right, the fin is going in the wrong direction. And this might happen. It depends on the servos and electronics. So there's a reverse button. And now turn it to the right, turn it to the right, turn it to the left, turn it to the left. And then we have the final test, which is seeing if we have motor control and if it's pushing air in or pushing it back. So it's actually doing everything the way it should. It's turning a little bit to the left, um, which might be because of the position. So one thing that you can do when you try this is actually immediately to change the linkage a little bit because when you do RC gear, it, it's very good to trim and have a linkage that works so it goes straight without having to use your trim buttons that you can later use when you're out racing. 
So I'll actually just make a small adjustment here on the fin. Typical testing procedure. Okay, so that's it. We're done. Uh, the hovercraft is up and running. Now it's just for you to go out and race it. And then I also want to see you inventing some of your own bases and skirts. And uh, we gladly look at them. So share them with us. But for now, let's go out racing. Oops. <laughs>